But, like, you still have a lot of developers who, even if they're on Windows, like, they, they use Linux in the form of, like, WSL, or if they use something else, they'll have a Linux server. Like, Linux, it, it just, it, it makes yeah. its way into all of these systems, no matter what you do. It really does. Um, it's definitely some a, a strong market for Apple, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think we've made a lot of inroads, but frankly, I think where we've made the most inroads developer-wise is among Windows developers. Mm. I mean, if you're a Windows developer, you're using Git in like WSL, you know, you're-, you're I remember wait, before WSL, you do Sigwin, which is very fun. Yeah, Sigwin, you're using Python, you're using CMake, like your entire tool chain is basically free software. And Windows is just like the silly OS that hosts everything. But I kind of feel like we're in the middle of like exterminating the concept of the pure Windows developer right now, mm -hmm. because you kind of can't use a pure Microsoft tool chain unless your only target is Windows as an operating system. Right. And like, that's just not realistic anymore. Even if you only care about Windows yourself, you might want a mobile app and then you need Android. And if you need Android, well, pff, you can't just use Microsoft's tool chain anymore. You're going to have to cross compile. You're going to have to use different tools. And if you're going to use different tools anyway, mm -hmm. probably a lot of them are free software tools. And if you're going to be using free software tools, well, heck, I guess you better just use them on Windows as well. And let's face it, no matter what you were using, you were probably using Git. So, you know, maybe maybe you're doing git for windows but like it's the gateway drug so i think we're well on our way to getting developers uh right now we're in the middle of doing gamers mm. and then the next major pull of that tent is artists mm -hmm. uh, i think kde has made a really big push for artists recently there was a lot of brouhaha and kerfuffle about the wayland transition and how this was supposedly terrible for artists but the really interesting thing is, if you look at why it was supposedly terrible for artists, it was because the giant dot bat script of hacks to make everything work stopped functioning. Mm -hmm. But on Wayland, we can actually integrate everything properly so that you don't need a huge hacky script to set everything up. We can just make it so that you plug in your tablet and it instantly magically works. And the eraser erases things and you've got pen pressure and you've got directionality and you can put your stylus in mouse mode if you want. And right now we're working on things like strips and dials on tablets and it's all just gonna, it's all just gonna work out of the box. And this is gonna offer a way better UX than X11 ever did. So I think just from like a hardware support perspective, we're gonna be getting there pretty close for artists. And then the next thing is, is really just software. Because of course, artists are gonna be bringing their specialized hardware, but they also want the software side to be really good. Um, I, I know that it's really difficult to break the Adobe habit, but it seems like Adobe is trying to get people to do that as fast as possible. I actually happen to have a lot of artists in my family. I married into like a family of artists. Mm -hmm. So I hear about this all the time. And like multiple people at family gatherings are complaining about Windows mm -hmm. and they're complaining about Adobe and they're complaining about software licenses and cloud services and AI nonsense all over the place. Uh -huh. And you know, every time the conversation turns in this direction, I just quietly plant more of my little Linux and KDE seeds. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think, you know, if we had if we had better software support for a lot of stuff, it would be a no-brainer in many right. cases. Many, many cases. Uh, and KDE is already doing really well here because we have Krita, which really is professional quality painting software. Uh, but painting is only one thing that, that you can do. Sure. There are a lot of other things too. And like Krita can be used for other things. It can be used for photo manipulation. It can be used for other stuff. Um, but it's it's not quite as like kitchen sinky as Photoshop right. is. The, the two things we have so, that are like there's more there's more to be done there. Yeah, the, like the two the two things we have which are like business level are Blender and Krita. When it comes to yeah. like vector graphics, like Inkscape is good, but it's not Adobe Illustrator. Yeah, that's really the thing is that there are holes, right? Like if if you're a digital painter, we can say okay, you don't need Photoshop. Like you don't need. Uh, Corel Painter, you can just use Krita and it's free and it's awesome and it's fantastic. But yeah, if you're if you're doing graphical uh, like vector illustration or you're doing like page layout stuff, mm -hmm. the options are not quite as good there. Yeah. Um, so I think this is probably a, a niche that needs to be needs to be filled. But it really does seem like there's a lot of energy 
that is being spent on making the whole thing a more artist friendly environment because that's very important yeah uh oh man i'm just i'm just thinking about it right now once we got gamers and we got developers and we got artists mm -hmm. i think the the rest of the world is next honestly mm -hmm. So we keep, we, so this is what happens with the show. We just segue off into random things and just like drag back well, you into know, like the main It actually the main makes line. a lot of sense. I know you wanted to talk about business and tech paladin, mm -hmm. but the reason why I think it makes sense that we keep branching off in different directions is because in basically every way, mm. my vision for tech paladin is that, that it's a vehicle to turbocharge KDE. Mm. Uh, my intention is essentially for this to be like rocket fuel for KDE as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So all the stuff that has needed to get working that hasn't gotten working, we can fix that stuff. Mm -hmm. All the relevant features that need to be implemented, we can implement that stuff. Um, anything that needs to be done, this company is a, is a vessel for making it happen. Uh, and it's not just here, like there's also KDE EV, which I'm on the board of, and I'm very involved in fundraising and hiring more people. Um, I mean, you know, it's 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 a little bit mercenary to be talking about money all the time, but like the more money exists in this space, the more people can make a living doing work. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's how stuff gets better, right? There's a certain level that volunteers will produce software at, and they'll do an incredible job producing software. But sometimes, it takes people doing it for a living to either get to the next level mm -hmm. or to go off to the side and do the boring stuff, like right, right. making sure the CI always works and making sure bugs get triaged and making sure projects get managed. Mm -hmm. And you know the stuff that uh, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to motivate volunteers to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, I even though it's a company and it's a US company, I kind of see it as, well, I don't see it as it is. It's joined at the hip to KDE. Mm -hmm. I mean, KDE's fortunes basically uh, determine this company's fortunes. Like we rise and fall with KDE. And I think what we're going to do is put as many resources back into KDE as possible mm -hmm. uh, for our own benefit, of course, because we want to continue to be employed and make money, but mostly so that KDE can get bigger and better and KDE can expand as an entity and become closer to offering the value that every human being on planet earth needs and deserves and once we finally get there we will have made a measurable difference in making the entire world a better place and fighting against the forces of crapware and shitification that are so incredibly prevalent and frustrating today and that's why we, get, we do what we do, right? right? Because we're not satisfied with that. We don't want stupid pop-ups all over the place. We don't want ads made by slave laborers and prisoners in, in China and Cambodia and you know, being constantly spammed and scammed with stuff by those who are forced to do it for a living. It's like, have you, have you read any of this stuff? There's absolutely horrific stuff going on with like people being basically forced to scam others for a living. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely atrocious and awful. Um, but like, that's the kind of stuff that people need to live with today. And, you know, you go on the Google Play Store, the Apple Store, and it's like a wasteland. The software landscape there is a complete wasteland mm -hmm. of people who are just trying to blast their app out to as many people as possible so that the monetization stream can give them like one penny per person multiplied by millions. And like, this is not the right way to run a society, right? Having every individual person responsible for basically coming up with a scam that they can use to rip off everybody else so that they can finally have enough money to live. This is not the way to do stuff. Everybody deserves better software. Everybody deserves free software that is high quality, that is amazing, and that they don't need to pay for so that their, their limited and precious funds can go towards the things that they do have to pay for. Everybody deserves high quality free software. And that's what this company is all about helping KDE provide. I didn't want to interrupt any of that. You were just going off. <laughs> I'm a little bit passionate about the subject. I can see that.